So what do we have today? More space, more drones, more cameras. Let's focus on that. Hey everybody, and welcome to After Chat. I'm Tom. And I'm Ryan. And I'm gonna let Ryan start this week, because we're gonna keep going back to the cool stuff from the ISS. Hi, Elliot. Well, Chris Hatfield is still cool on Earth. Oh, he's Mike. still very cool on Earth. But he's talking about stuff he did on the ISS. Yeah. So Chris Hatfield was recently in a Q&A with, what, uh, Brandon Von Son, was the travel photographer. Um, was this for anybody? I didn't see that in the, the no, post. No, just happened to just catch random, him. Random news piece. Um, he did a Q&A with the travel, this travel photographer about how to take, how he was taking sharp handheld pictures in space. Um, that zero gravity makes it possible to take long exposure handheld pictures with very little consideration for movement because there's no force acting on you. And the only thing he worried about was his heartbeat is what the takeaway from this was. Um, he, he demonstrated that the, the lack of gravity makes, makes it almost the easiest thing to take a very long exposure but very still picture. Yeah, assuming you, you steady yourself first, nothing else is gonna move. So it's just, yeah, you're not fighting gravity holding the lens up or anything. Mm -hmm. You're just there. In fact, you could probably let go of it and just push the camera. Oh yeah, I think that was that was one of the things that they've seen them do is just yep. prop it somewhere and it just kind of sits. Just let it go because that, that, that's all you really need to do when you're in space. I mean, the, the space is your tripod. Yeah. So it's Brandon von Son was his blog. That's what he was doing it for. So yeah, I don't know how I got this, this access, but that was very good. You know what? He's Canadian. I bet if you just ask him for an interview, I was going to say, yeah, say, yeah sure. He's Canadians. Damn Canadians. Yeah. Well, sticking on, on the on the Canadian theme for just a second, I'm going to go off script here for a second. Um, we got our, our stead snaps in, which I'm really excited about. I actually was out in the field yesterday playing with them. They're unfortunately underneath both of the cameras. Yeah, we can't show you because they're actually both mounted up right now. So if they fall, uh, yeah, they're, they're, well, they're, they're actually really well built. So I was, I was excited. Um, I went out in the, out, out in the park with uh, Jesse yesterday and... Uh, we, we did some field testing, so that video will be up at some point this week, too. Uh, so look for that. Just a heads up. Extra video this week. All right. So free stuff. So, yeah, free stuff. We like free stuff. Free stuff is good. Um, you can get a copy of DxO Optics Pro version 8 for free. No strings attached. You can just go download it. You're done. You get it forever. Granted, version 9 is the current version right now, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm going to try this because I've never actually played with DxO Optics. I was going to say, what is DxO Optics Pro? Like, what, um, what is the point? It is for mass editing photos, like beyond Lightroom. Like, if you, I'm actually surprised that you don't use it because, like, you can edit, like, an entire wedding. Like, you know, like, these next 400 shots were all done outside at the reception. You can just, like, mass edit all 400 of them, and it'll make little tweaks along the way. Hmm. And it actually, it, it reads more data out of the, the files to edit better. So like it'll read your lens, so if you change lenses or ch even change focal lengths, it'll adjust with that as opposed to like, in Lightroom, if you say, you know, apply this, and it, you have your 2470 on, and you switched halfway through to your 7200, it's still going to apply the 2470 uh, camera calibration to it. It does, trust me. If you what, you copy the camera calibration settings to... Yeah. Like if you yeah. if like if you do the first picture and you say sync all on, on all settings, mm -hmm. it will put the twenty four seventy through even the seventy two hundreds because you can manually override so it can go in and mm -hmm. it will do it. Trust me, it makes twenty it makes the pictures out of my seventy two hundred look really weird when you set it with the twenty four seventy calibration. That's good to know. Uh, but yeah, this will actually read the EXIF data and apply the right ones to it, so that that helps. Um, it is it is mostly meant for like massive editing. Like massive, massive adjustments when you're trying to just do a whole group and then you, you, you can do the individual in there as well. Um, but most people I've talked to who use it also have Lightroom and they'll basically do their mass edit in there, do their picks, do their everything else in there and then export that as a catalog into Lightroom and just work out of that to do the individual photo edits. And things. Hmm. Yeah, let's take a look. So it's, it, hey, it's free. So I said go grab it. I mean, this is a pro-level software you're getting for free, so, you know, 
why not? And you have until January 31st, 2015. So you got plenty of time. Of time. Yeah. Plenty of time that just started up a couple days ago, I think Friday. So you've got tons and tons of time to get this. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. So continuing the march into micro drones, uh, what is this one? This one is, what is the name of this one? Anura. That's, that's an awful name. But Anura it makes a pocket-sized drone, which is shaped like an iPhone and slightly thicker than the two iPhones stacked together. Um, two iPhone yeah. sixes stacked together yeah. because that not matters. six pluses though, it's just sixes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because they stack kind of weird. Um, well, it's the camera. The yeah. camera protrudes out the back. So it's a pocket-sized camera-equipped micro drone, like we've seen a couple come through. But this is more kind of styled and more engineered to be. Kind of a street photography thing you can tell yeah. that's kind of their angle is that's totally their angle um your iphone and yay i'm iphone camera am yep ericam anura the anura um, ericam i always want to call it the americam yeah but there's no m in it anura is a bad it just doesn't read right no it really it doesn't. doesn't read right it reads like too many other things uh, but it's on kickstarter oh no kidding they yeah no kidding it's on kickstarter um they have like 50 days left at this point and they're like 60 percent backed they're looking for 100 grand yeah so that means they're about 60k um but they it's did say if they sold or if they sold you know because you don't sell on kickstarter you you offer whatever however the fuck you don't sell uh you sell things like Kickstarter. if they sell the thousand the first thousand down you go if you if they get a thousand they're going to add extra features like that's a stretch goal hmm so like if they get through the first like if they sell a thousand units, they'll add follow me and return to home, which apparently aren't in there. Well, yeah, I mean it's a twelve so, to sixteen minute runtime of a tiny little thing. I don't yeah. see. Well, even like the early DJI Phantoms were only twelve to sixteen minutes, and they had a return to home feature. Yeah, but they're the size of a freaking basketball. They're not, yeah. you know. And it's also it's a toy. This is not a. Yeah, no, this is only 200 bucks. And it's also, what, 340 by 288 resolution for yeah, onboard camera? It's like, and it's, it's like old school webcam quality. I mean, it's it's a very early thing. I, it, it's a toy. It's very But it'd be a great Christmas present for someone who keeps going, oh man, I want a drone. You can buy them this and shut them up. For, and then it'll work for six months and be dead <laughs> anyway. And... I already ordered a couple for Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the DJI Phantom is fun to play with. You don't need to put a camera on the thing. It's still yeah, fun to play. Yeah, you just play them while I'm around. So see that, that that's that's the the ultimate insult. It's going to be the hobbyist drone people who are just going to get it completely shit on by the commercial <laughs> photography stuff. <laughs> like it doesn't even have a camera on it. Does it get shot by a shotgun out of the sky? <laughs> Only in Florida. Only in Florida. It was New Jersey. Oh, was that New Jersey? Yes. That was Florida. <laughs> no. That was that. Uh, was there are too many too many stories about drones and bad things happening to them. Apparently. Yeah, I see. Soon there's gonna be a market of like used DJI Phantoms because people don't really care about them. So that's what I'm waiting for. Actually, that is seriously what I'm waiting for. Is it's just for people. The batteries are the tough part there, but yeah, but you can always replace batteries. I mean, yeah. even buying a pair of replacement batteries and a used one is gonna be cheaper than buying a new one. So yeah, they're gonna get outpaced, which is nice. Yeah, you can buy older ones. Yeah. So Sony is still putting out XQD cards and not really telling anybody why. Um, because they're really fast. A new G so C fast too. Yeah, it's also like eighty times the size. Uh, the G series XQD released with a four K uh, camcorder from Sony. It's what is it, another four hundred megabyte four hundred megabyte per second yeah. uh, SD sized card. So these yeah. are super fast. They're still very expensive because it's a new line that just announced a couple days ago. Um, it's also really expensive because only like two things in the world use them. No, it's like four. There's there's two or three Cine uh, camcorders and there's the two D fours. Yeah. So I mean, there are I mean, those are very those are widely used camcorders too. Those aren't like weird exotic camcorders. Those yeah. those see traction, especially in actual event shooting and stuff. It's I've I know people who use that camcorder. Um, so they're at one hundred and sixty four dollars for a thirty two gig. Three hundred and sixty-four dollars for a sixty-four gig, and eight hundred dollars for the one twenty-eight gig. So it's still very expensive, but when you're shooting four K video to a pair of cards you at the same time, you need to write very, very fast. Yes. 
Yeah, it's apparently like more than twice as fast as the previous XQD cards. Which are already super fast. Well, yeah, which are already faster than anything else. So they just made something fast go faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 400 mega megabyte per second is 10 times faster than the SD cards I use. Yeah. Just about. So it's it's very, very fast. Yeah. That's cool. So. Oh, yeah. yeah this, is, this is funny because I, I, I we, we all know I, I peruse the... The rumor sites, and I love my rumors, and I like I like to jump ahead and say, "Hey, this is gonna happen." But this time, even I'm skeptical of things I'm seeing on a rumor site. Well, I mean, it's gonna happen at some point. So it's, it's gonna, gonna happen at some point, probably sooner than later, and probably sooner than later. The 60 is the next one in line if Canon follows their typical life cycle pattern to get an upgrade. Uh, it would be the 60, and then the one the one series would be after that, and then you'd get the 5D Mark IV. You know, I, I I like to go to my rumor sites, and this just doesn't make sense. Uh, Amazon.uk is showing the Canon 60 as discontinued by manufacturer. This conflicts with Adorama, B and H, uh, even fonts or Amazon US, and and even Canon.com. Yeah, I mean it's not I out of the think question. Think somebody screwed up. Well, it's not out of the question that it would have gotten discontinued a month ago. A month ahead of time, right? But usually, I could see, I could see this got discontinued by the end of the year. Oh, I, I, I would be more surprised if they if they didn't announce end of life for it by the end of the year. I don't know if they announced discontinuation by then, only because usually by now, like if something's about to get discontinued, the rumors usually are flying around about what the replacement's going to be. They're usually wrong, but at least they're flying around. There's no rumors about a sixty Mark II yet. There's nothing. It's just, it's just like, eh, whatever. We don't care. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's, it's you might see more more kind of teaser stuff about cameras and then the discontinuation at the same time. So yeah, but it it, it also doesn't mean anything, which is no, fun. it really doesn't mean anything. It's just weird that my camera was discontinued like a year and ten days after the camera was put out. So it just well, means absolutely it was nothing. Replaced by the six ten. Yeah. So, but again, it doesn't mean anything. It's like yeah. it wasn't replaced by the six ten. It was. Just turned into the six ten. Nothing, yeah. nothing changed. It was the same camera. Was... <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a little odd that, that that's being marked as disco when it's not, or maybe it is, and someone jumped the gun. Who knows? But I, I am looking forward to a sixty Mark II, although I probably won't run out and buy it right away because mine's plenty good for what I'm doing. Exactly. Uh, unless they offer something severely drastic, in which case there's nothing severely drastic. You don't know that? Is there any even rumors about it yet? There isn't anything really drastic. Yeah, there could happen. be. It's not like top secret camera technology. There is They're top secret camera technology out there. HQ. It's, it's going to be like a 50 megapixel sensor. Yeah. yeah. Like duct tape the cameras together. Like. <laughs> it, it, it's it's going to rival medium format cameras for megapixels. Yeah. Sony is doing that. That's well, fine. So, Sony is doing that. But we talked about that last week, and that, yeah. that's why I think they're going to have to compete with Sony, and they're going to have to say, oh, Sony's put out 48, we've got to put out 58. 20, 24, yay. <laughs> In typical Canon fashion, we'll get, like, 18. <laughs> we'll go <laughs> down. <laughs> we'll have less pixels. <laughs> I see, I love the argument still continues after, like, the 810 does what it does. The 810 is such a good camera. Oh, God. I, I'd buy it's, it it's, it's a ridiculous, I mean, it's a, such a ridiculously good sensor. I'd buy an eight ten. whining about. It's got too many pixels, and it's like, no, really, no, well, there's no such thing. No, there is. No, there, I mean, there is. No, I mean, the first, the first, some of the first SLRs were overpacked and they were really noisy, and it was okay. Like, yes, yeah, so there's too many pixels could, when it's done wrong, but the, the eight no, ten I mean, doesn't noise, do it wrong. The noise, the noise level is still not better than everything else it's still just as good as everything else it's not increasing its noise sensitivity really yeah. it's increasing over the 800 but it's not increase over the 600 or the df or the d4 mm -hmm. yeah so it's still packed it's just it's so the resolution so high it doesn't matter anyway which yeah. is nice i mean that's it is true when you when you take those in and you noise reduce an 810 file it's much better than noise reducing a 24 mega megapixel yeah. file you yeah. can do more to it. There's more data to let go away in the noise pro process. Yeah, exactly. When you have to. Yeah, so that's a fun rumor thing. So, I think someone just jumped the gun, but it is, it is fun to see that out there that someone screwed up. Yeah, that's always interesting when they get those little like retailer things. 
So, big surprise that the new Nikon camera is as good as the other Nikon cameras that are in the top 10 DxO mark list. I like my weird pauses. Um, it's a very Shatner-esque. I know. I'm like going to stop that. DxO mark, uh, the D750 has made the top 10 to join its friends, which are the, what, the D610, D810, D800, D800E, DF, and DF. something else. Um, so the way the way that DxO Mark measures things, it obviously favors everything Nikon sensors generally. Apparently, um, you know that the way they measure things scientifically, as opposed to whatever that other thing is, just being right. Yeah, <laughs> just being right all the time. Um, so everything comes across as excellent with the D750. The, the, I guess the color the color bit depth is a little bit lacking compared to the 810 and the 610, but the overall score. Of a 93 lives up to the 97 of the 810 and the 94 of the 610, which makes me feel better that I don't need to go buy one because yep. it's basically the same camera with a bunch of. I mean, the upgrades are very important. The thing that doesn't come across with the 750 is the autofocus increase and the. There's lots of things that make it work probably better than the 610. Yeah, but but aren't tested by DxO because but generally aren't tested. It comes across in the overall score. I mean, the, the overall score does include like functionality and kind of usage thing. Yep. But the way that they show their scores, it's right in line with the, the D610 and the D810. Yeah. I do find it amusing because if you go to the DxO Mark website and you look up any camera, it says, compared to another one by the same manufacturer by the, you know, it's like if it's Nikon, it's like compared to another Nikon, compared to a Canon, compared to a Sony, or obviously a Canon to Canon, Canon to Nikon, Canon mm -hmm. to Sony. It's, I just find it amusing that the thing they compare it to is the 6D, which doesn't seem like it should be its direct competitor. No. Like, it should be a 5D3, because it's obviously not a 1, because the 1's supposed well, to be a 5D3 the is also a different market, too. It's like... Yeah. But this... I mean, the 6D really competes with the 610. Yeah. The 750 really doesn't have a competitor. That's the problem. There's yeah. nothing in there. Like the the 7D Mark II would be its competitor, but it's not full frame. But the thing, the same with the, the 750 is very much not a 5D Mark III in the line. No, it's very much the lower, the lower action and event photography camera rather than the yeah. biggest pro camera. So the 810 is taking the role of the 5D III. Yeah, that's obvious. That matchup is a matchup, but that's pretty much what you have to match is the yeah, 750 with the 6D. It's just, it's like, it's just it's not another camera. Like if if you if you took full frame crop frame out, I'd say the seventy Mark II would be the better. Yeah, I'd almost rather compare the two seventy Mark II and the seven fifty. Just, just accept the fact that the seventy Mark II is a crop frame, and that, maybe that's all the sixty Mark II is going to be the seventy Mark II with full frame in it. Uh, if I mean, if they're following, if they're following their typical trends, well, the six, following, well, the they're six. following Nikon's fucking Nikon's path of the seventy two hundred being the six ten, mm -hmm. and then like. That's what Nikon is doing. It's the 7000 oh. series works exactly the same way as the 610 in well, every single the, way. The 6 and the 7 were very similar. Yeah, so, I mean, that's the point. It's, a, yeah. the, the, it's, it's just a, it was the jump from crop to fall. Yeah. So a 60 Mark II should be the same thing. Yeah. And then that would be a good comparison to the 750, I think. The 60 Mark II would be a good comparison. because Yeah, it's, that's because they update the same thing. So it's, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a well, good... And it shows it shows the, the Sony sensors are still ruling everything and in terms of like contrast bit depth of color and yeah. overall sort of sharpness. Yep. Yeah. And so, low light performance. Yep. And eventually they'll get that into their own cameras and make it work. They are in their own cameras and they do work. <laughs> they just don't have the optics the nah, same way. They, they, they will eventually. They're not meant they're not meant for the same thing really. Nah, so. nah, they know what they're doing. So uh, in case you're curious about the DxO Mark and the DxO Pro Optic software, it is the same group of people. Mm -hmm. um, just because I realized we talked about both and you could get confused. It is the same group of people. One is their software. One is their website that they rate camera equipment on. And all that information that comes from their rating the camera equipment goes into the software to keep it up to date. So Yeah, it's very, I mean, it's a cool organization to work. It's it's a good data point when you're researching stuff, but it's, yeah, you always have to temper it with other things. So. And it is my go-to when I'm researching just about anything. It's a good place to start, really. Yeah. Um, it's not I, the end-all, be-all, but it's a great place you, to start. You have to temper it with other reviews and other stuff because a lot of the times some of the direct usage doesn't translate. Like my, my current predicament with the macro lenses is I know one is better, 
in usage. Like I've, I've heard reviews and I've heard stories of people using them that the, the Nikon macro lens is probably better than the Tamron macro lens. It's, yeah. It doesn't come across in DxO the same way. They're both basically the exact same score. Even though the Tamron scores higher in sharpness because it's apparently really ridiculously sharp for what it is, yep. um, they come across the same exact score for no particular reason. Like the Nikon is better to use, but the Tamron is maybe technologically newer yep. because it's a newer lens. It's just it's such a it's a weird using just DXL mark. You drive yourself crazy. Oh yeah, no, you, you, as with any research, you need more than one data point. So. All right, um, kind of a light week on news. Um, even even the news aggregators are having a hard time finding news this week. And, oh yeah, uh, here, get down. Can't just make shit up. Oh, they did. Oh well, yeah, but it wasn't news that they made up. They just were like well, you posting. Dig a, you dig, well, they were like posting articles like why your photography sucks. Watch this video. And yeah. It's like like how long ago was Hadfield the interview? Like a couple months ago, probably probably shortly after it came off the space station. That's probably a good, good bit after that, but cool. Yeah. So when when even the news, even when the news sites are digging for, oh my god, well, let's look at this. Even when they're digging up clickbait just to get you to go to their site, you know it's a slow news week. Mm -hmm. It's a very slow news week. <laughs> all right. So that's all we got. We'll see you later. Have a good one. I mean, short of putting a clam cake in my hand, this doesn't get much more Rhode Island. Yeah, kind of bitter and uh, not that great. Yeah. 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 <laughs>